Welcome to Car Rides with Little Miss Gigi. A place where girls like you will be inspired by godly stories. Shalom, girls. It's Esther here today. What does shalom mean? Oh, hi, Valentina. Hi. Well, did you know that shalom is actually hello in Hebrew? Well, in that case, shalom. So maybe you're wondering why I am using shalom, but it's because today's story is about a little Hebrew baby. Yes, our story is called Amongst the Weeds. So girls, do you know what the story is about? I think it's about baby Moses, but I'm not sure. Let me think. Yes, you are 100% correct. And if you thought the same thing, you are also right. Yes, I can't wait to get into the story. It's a good one. But before we do that, Valentina, we need to get Poppy. Hello, girls. Or should I say, Shalom, just like they do here in Egypt. That's right, girls. I am sailing down the Nile as we speak. Right here, floating next to me, I can see a few little things and even some crocodiles laying on the bank. It's exciting and a little bit scary. But even though I'm here, we're going to have a look at the special things I've got in my glitter box. Oh, this is so much fun! This week, we're going to make our brain work. That's right, our brain is going to work this time. We are going to do a decode message. We're going to be like investigators. In this game, you have to find out the secret message. And when you do, make sure you send me the photos of what the message is. Oh, I can't wait to see it. So please, please, please send me your message to see if you figured it out. And also make sure you send me a picture of your beautiful coloured pictures. I really want to see them too. Well, I'm off to take some very exciting photos while I'm here. Until next time, bye girls! Verse time. Today's Bible verse is, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Psalms 46.1 Thanks, Valentina. That's a beautiful verse. So now that we've read it, we can get on to the story. Amongst the Reeds Pharaoh was furious. How dare the Israelites become bigger and stronger than us? He roared. We must do something. With fists clenched, the king thought long and hard. No one dared speak. I have it. Pharaoh jumped up from his throne. They will become my slaves. From this day forward... The Israelites will no longer be free. They will build my cities and make me rich. For a long time, the Israelites were put to hard work building mighty cities and doing everything that Pharaoh wanted. One day when Pharaoh was in his flashy chariot, he noticed that the Israelites seemed to be multiplying. Beetroot red with anger, he declared an awful mean law. From now on, every baby boy that is born must be thrown into the Nile River. Kill them all. With that, he stomped off to his chariot. Big clouds of dust enveloped him as he disappeared around the corner. The awful news reached Amram and Jochebed. They had three children. Miriam was the eldest daughter, the son Aaron was the middle child, and they had a small baby boy, only three months old. Jochebed grabbed her baby boy and held him close. She knew she couldn't keep him hidden in the house any longer. She had to send him away. But where? That night, as a family prayed, Jacobet had a beyond brilliant idea. She knew the idea wasn't hers. He had come from God. When Amran and Aaron were tucked away in bed, Jacobet called Miriam aside and told her her plan. Miriam's eyes rounded in fear. Mother, are you sure that's a good idea? What if something happens to the baby? We can't risk it. No, Miriam, God will take care of your baby brother. I know it. Every night, both Miriam and Jochebed worked silently and quickly, weaving the basket. The thick tar and pitch was heavy and smelly, but it seemed to be helping the basket stick together well enough to make it waterproof. Finally, it was dry and complete. Jochebed lined the basket with warm blankets, making a soft and cushion so her baby could rest comfortably. That night, they ventured out into the darkness. Everything was still. The only movement were the stars twinkling above them. Jochebed carried her baby and Miriam wobbled under the weight of the basket. In the distance, they heard the sound of footstep. They froze. 
but the footsteps drifted away and both exhaled in relief. When they reached the Nile River, Miriam knelt down and held the basket open while her mother placed the baby inside. She cushioned him and covered him lovingly. Silent tears rolled down her cheek. Chocobed closed her eyes for a few minutes and then bent over to kiss the baby's chubby soft cheek. He stirred slightly, then continued sleeping peacefully. He was unaware that he was going to be placed in a basket and sent down the Nile River in his little boat. On the cool banks of the Nile, mother and daughter knelt and prayed over the baby. Chocobet knew that God would look after this precious cargo. Before closing the lid, she grabbed Miriam's hand in her own. Miriam, stay and look after your brother. Keep a close eye on the basket as he floats down the river. Don't lose sight of him. Miriam nodded round eye. Yes, mummy. I promise I will. Jochebed looked at the baby one more time and latched the lid closed. Slowly, they pushed the basket out into the river and saw it gently float away. With tears streaming down her face, Jochebed fled to the privacy of her house. The morning sun was a welcome sight to Miriam as she continued watching over her little brother in the distance. She gasped when the water moved violently in a gust of wind and almost tipped the basket over. She knew that angels were working overtime to keep her baby brother safe. Mud squished between her toes as she ran amongst the reeds on the riverbank, pretending she was playing. Soft, silvery laughter echoed in the distance. Miriam froze. Someone was coming. Heart pounding, Miriam crouched low among the reeds, trying to hide. She placed her hand across her mouth to keep from making any sound. The laughter and footsteps came closer until she could see the perfectly pedicured toes through the reeds. She bit her lips. What if they found her? Princess, this looks like a safe place to bathe, someone said. Miriam gasped. <gasps> Princess? Oh no, Pharaoh's daughter? If she saw the baby, she might kill him or take him to the father. Miriam prayed. There was nothing she could do, only trust God. Peering from under the reeds, she saw the beautiful princess rub scented oils on her skin, her maids close behind. Suddenly, her hand froze in midair and she pointed at something. What is that? Kia, fetch me that basket. Miriam closed her eyes and prayed harder. The basket was slowly pushed towards the princess and she opened it. He was crying, probably hungry, thirsty and hot. The princess heart went out to him and tears filled her eyes. Oh... This is one of the Hebrew babies. He's so cute, she whispered. His little fat hand held her index finger. His cries grew louder and louder. Miriam couldn't hold back anymore. She had to speak. She jumped out from behind the reeds and exclaimed, Princess, shall I go and get one of the Hebrews' women to nurse the baby for you? The princess and her maid stepped back in surprise. Blinking a few seconds, she finally spoke. Yes, go, what a great idea. Through the mud and goo, Miriam ran as fast as her legs would carry her, until, puffing and panting, she arrived home. <sighs> mother, baby is safe. The princess wants to look after him. Come! Both mother and daughter ran towards the banks of the River Nile. A precious cargo awaited Jacobet. She couldn't wait to see her baby. So do you know what the princess named the baby? And why did she give him that name? I know why she named the baby that. Ooh, very cool, Valentina. But I want our listeners to go searching in the Bible for the answer. So if you don't know, you can find the answer in Exodus 2.10. And if you still can't find the answer, you need to ask an adult and you can check it together like detectives. Okay, time to check Girls Express. Instead of a letter, we have a reminder. Don't forget to send us your letters, emails or audio memos. When you send us your memo, we will play them on our podcast. And also don't forget to give us rating so that we can do better on the podcast and other girls can find us. Also, don't forget that we've got a new story for you next week. And next week's story is called Lost at the Fair. Can you guess what it's about? It's a good one and it's based on a true story. We can't wait for you to listen to it. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Don't forget that you're Gigi, gorgeous in God's image.